What's up guys? So today I've got my hands on a powerful new mini PC. So this is the GM Tech M4. Now this mini PC is powered by an Intel Core i9 processor. That's the 11900H octa-core. For graphics, we have the integrated Intel Ultra HD. We have 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM. We've got one terabyte of M.2 NVMe internal storage. This mini PC has Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and we've also got a 2.5 gigabit LAN. This mini PC will also give you the option to add a two and a half inch SATA hard drive in the future. The PC is running Windows 11 Professional, supports triple 4K display output, so that's HDMI, display port and type C. We've got a built-in cooling fan and this supports 4K at 60 Hertz. So closer look at the box itself. So this mini PC is made from a complete metal case and you've got some ventilation at the top. On the front, we've got a combo headphone slash microphone jack. We've got a type C port that does support display out. We've got two USB 3.2 type A ports. We've got a physical power button. On this side, there is nothing. And on the back of the unit, we have a display port, an HDMI port. We've got four USB-A ports, and they are all USB 3.2. We've got two 2.5 gigabit LAN ports, and we have a power socket. And just above that, you can see there is a Kensington lock. If we keep going, nothing on this side. And that will bring us back to the front. And here is what the bottom of the box looks like. Okay, let me show you quickly what you get inside the box. So we've got paperwork and a business card included. Here is SATA cable and some screws in case you wanted to add a two and a half inch SATA drive. And we will be checking out the internals later on. So I'll show you how it all connects up. We've got UK power cable and a power supply to go with it. And I'll quickly show you guys a close up of the voltage information. This also comes with an HDMI cable and the mini PC itself. Let's have a quick look at the internals and see the upgrade options we have. To get inside, we need to open two screws on the back of the box. Thereafter, the lid is easy to just slide off. You will see a two and a half inch SATA hard drive caddy and behind it are your main upgrade options. To access them, you need to remove three more small screws on the actual hard drive caddy and lift it straight off. So you can see your RAM. We have two RAM slots with 16 gigs in each slot, giving you 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM. And the brand of the RAM is Wuposit, and I've not come across this brand too many times. Also, maximum supported is 128 gigabytes, so you can have up to 64 gigs per RAM slot. The storage is one terabyte NVMe SSD, and it's Lexar branded. You can swap this out for up to two terabytes, but if you do, you will have to reinstall Windows yourself. So those were basically your upgrade options available for this box. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and you can see on screen exactly how long it took to boot up this mini PC from a cold start. And this is Windows 11 Professional offering you a full PC experience in a mini compact size. Furthermore, the system is powerful enough to run all your regular Windows applications and games. Comes with all the usual Windows apps you would expect to find, including the Windows App Store. Now let's very quickly check out the system properties. So you can see there, Windows 11 Professional, 11th Gen Intel Core i9, that's the 11900H. You can see the clock speeds, 32 gigs of RAM, 64-bit operating system, and if we just click on activation, you can see it's activated and ready to use. And quick look at the system storage info, one terabyte of internal storage. From that, we have 930 gigs, which are actually usable. And from that, we've got 892 free to use. So I've not actually installed anything yet. This is what you begin with. And the second drive you are seeing is my 64 gig flash drive, which contains all my 4K samples. And that is exactly what we're going to be testing next. So let's go ahead and play some 4K video samples from a USB drive, starting off with the usual high bitrate 4K jellyfish demo. The first video clip is 160 megabits per second. And you can see it's doing a very good job of playing this back nice and smooth. The second clip is slightly higher, 180 megabits per second. And again, you can see it's doing a very good job, a very smooth video playback. And the last clip is the real test, 400 megabits per second. 
And as you guys can see, it's doing a great job. Awesome, smooth, high bitrate 4K video playback. It plays them all. I also tested some 4K samples with different file and HDR formats, and they all work great out of the box using the default media player. All right, so we are moving on to some 4K YouTube streaming, starting off with the usual Costa Rica demo. And as you guys can see, 4K 60 with HDR is supported on YouTube. So let's see how it plays back. I guess we had this like a pretty huge civil war going on all across America. We just try to stay out with what we see on the news. Nothing's clear to us. Oh shit. We oh, have no problem killing your son. I dare you to go after Charles. Next up, we are testing Netflix from the web browser. And as you guys can see, Netflix does support Ultra HD 4K streaming. All right, so time for the gaming test. The first game we're playing is GTA 5. I have the graphics resolution set to 1080p and overall graphics set to very high. You can see the game is playing quite smooth, um, achieving around an average of 26 frames per second. And the TDP is peaking at nearly 28 watts. Um, the game seems to be playing fine. It looks pretty good. So this is how the game plays. Yes, I know the game is 10 years old, but it is one of my benchmark games when it comes to testing PC games um, because you can take the resolution higher if you have a capable system. This one is achieving only 26 frames per second. We're not achieving 30 frames per second on the highest graphics. We are, All right, so we're now playing a Plague Tale. Um, resolution is set to 1080p. We've got the graphics set to low. You can see here, the game looks terrible. We are, we're getting just about 15 frames per second. Um, it's a blurry mess. It's definitely not playable. And I'm gonna set it down to 720p to see if we can improve things. So you can see the frame rate has gone up slightly to 19 frames per second. Still not at the level that I would expect to play this game at. So 30 frames per second is the minimum I would consider. So this uh, system will struggle even with the Core i9. The graphics chip just can't handle it. The integrated Intel Iris Xe can't handle a new graphically intense AAA game like A Plague Tale. So let's try one more game. This is Undisputed Boxing. Resolution is set to 1080p and the graphics is set to its lowest. And as you guys can see, the game absolutely struggles to play at around 10 frames per second. And if we drop the resolution down to 720p, keeping everything else the same at the lowest graphics, it brings the frame rate up to around 15 frames per second, which is still not exactly smooth gameplay. The minimum I would expect uh, to play this game at is 30 frames per second. Unfortunately, that is not going to be possible with the integrated graphics you get in this mini PC. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core score of 1670 and multi core score of 8898. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we have achieved 792k. And in the CPU benchmark test by Passmark, we have achieved 20k. So let's see how that compares with the others. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2024, allowing you to compare the price, specs and features. Now the ranking is based on benchmark scores. So looking at Antutu, Geekbench and Passmark, I give it an average and the mini PC gets ranked accordingly. So the GM Tech M4 takes position seven on this chart. The Intel Core i9 is a very powerful chipset, but unfortunately lacks in the graphics department. Now that being said, you can view all my latest charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure and completely free of charge. So there you have it guys, that was the GM Tech M4 mini PC. So this is a pretty feature packed compact computer. Standout features for me, the Intel Core i9, connectivity galore, triple 4K display output and dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. You have effective internal cooling fan, performance is very good for everyday tasks, so it's great for general web browsing, office applications, coding, graphics and some light editing work. AAA games can be played, most older titles at 1080p high graphics to achieve around 30 FPS, or the latest titles can be played at 720p lowest graphics. Some newer games will struggle due to the lack 
of performance in the Intel graphics. You could also use an external Type-C graphics card to boost your gaming performance. Windows 11 comes pre-installed and activated and ready to use. Price-wise, I think this is a bit expensive for the overall performance you're getting. Even with that Core i9 processor, you could pay a similar amount and achieve a better gaming performance from an AMD Ryzen mini PC. Now, mini PCs are usually pricey anyway, as you're paying the premium for the space saving form factor. And it's also nice that you can easily upgrade the components yourself in the future, should you need to. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.